And uh, we're welcoming today uh, uh, Brian Warby and Gabe Fishman of Open Air Boston and uh, Aaron Kaplan of uh, Funk Freuer, Austria. Gabe, someone's over here. And uh, when I when I I couldn't read this because my not wearing glasses, so it, actually I thought it said cyanide Wi-Fi networks for from the bottom up. It's, the word is citywide um, <laughs> Wi-Fi networks. Although <laughs> some days there, there are if you need it if you need actually yeah. to make them fatal you can do that on very short notice. Anyway, so um, uh, I'll just let you guys go right ahead with it and tell us what you're all about. Thank you. Uh, again, I'm Brian Warby. I'm the CEO of OpenAirBoston.net. Um, I've brought my colleague Gabe Fishman from OpenAir and Aaron Kaplan, who's come all the way to us from Austria just for this one hour. Huh. No, he hasn't. He's, he <laughs> came to do programming work for us this week. I am going to turn it over to Aaron in the spirit of time because Gabe and I are local. If we need to come back, if we, we run out of time, we need to come back, we can certainly do that. But I really want Aaron to get to a lot of his good work and learning on the Funk Fiora network over the last several years, and many of the lessons from which we've tried to uh, incorporate into some aspects of the Open Air Boston program. So with that, Aaron. So I'll try to... Okay, so I'm very honored to be here. Thanks. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is, uh, you, you know the three important things that I think Lessing said that, right? Open source, we need open source, open hardware, and I'm going to talk about open networks. Um, I think, you know, in the future we'll need a fourth uh, ingredient to the magic formula, which will be something like open power grids or open power networks and uh, better optimized transportation systems. But um, now I want to talk about the, the open networks that we built in Europe. So I'm going to talk about people climbing on roofs, I'm going to talk about um, patching things together in a way which were never intended to be. And uh, I found this, this really, for me this was a very, very interesting quote from Bertolt Brecht. Um, he envisioned, in my opinion, the, the internet like a long time before it was even here. And he said, um, what happens when the radio becomes a two-way communication device? Um, you know, it was a push-only medium before. It helped dictators. It helped, uh, yeah, dictators in, in, in Austria and, and, and in Germany to speak to the masses. masses. So now we have this two-way communication system and this vast network of pipes. He used the word pipes. It was really interesting. Um, I think we still have pipes, and inside of those pipes, five optic lines. Um, and I think we're now... We proved in, in Europe and also t some areas in the States um, that actually this two-way communication network can exist, that it can get big, and it can be done. So currently, the Internet, what's wrong with the Internet? A few things, but among them is um, uh, it's a scale-free network, which is good on the one hand, bad on the other. You can take out a few central nodes, and you can uh, eliminate, eliminate communication. Uh, so there's a lot of concentration on a few key nodes, which would be in the U.S., uh, Florida, and East Coast, West Coast Central data centers. Um, and I think, like, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but I think like uh, early generations of network uh, pioneers um, envisioned often something more meshed, maybe. Or at least I, I had the impression. So I think we we can have. <coughs> A different structure in addition or in parallel. We need the, the existing internet as it is now, but we can have something in parallel which is pretty meshed. Uh, this is actually a, a almost live picture of the Vienna mesh network. Uh, I took that 20, uh, 20 minutes ago, the screenshot, and you can see really it's, it's like a spider went berserk. <laughs> um, we, we can see very, very nicely that Long links are not really a problem. We have a few green, meaning good quality, very long links, and short red links. So the, the properties of uh, radio interference are more of an issue, actually, than distance. So this is it's here. All wireless, right? These are all wireless. Yeah. So this here is the central part of Vienna. Spreads out a little bit more here, a little bit more here. And uh, 
Uh, red is, is a bad link quality, so too many packets are lost here. Yellow is uh, okay, and green is good link. So it's just an easy parameter to see ourselves if, if the links are so good. There are links to individuals? There are to, to people who build things on their roofs. I see, okay. Some are going 10 kilometers. 30. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Um, Do you want to go into what technology you're using for that? Is it yeah, sure. Sure. I'm, I'm coming to that. So let me just maybe, we can see that maybe live. This is uh, the live map. I can zoom in here. And um, you can see in the first um, aspect of the, uh, well, an abstraction of the Fresnel zone where the radio signal is best. We just did a line and you can see where it cuts through a hill so you can easily estimate if the, if the link will be good or, or bad. So the, the longest links are actually, that's why I wanted to see it now, whoops, sorry. Yeah. No, I wanted to actually. Yeah, that's what I needed. So I wanted to show you basically the the distance is not a problem because we can go halfway to to Bratislava, which is here. So this is a thirty kilometer link. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, stop. Nope, not my mails. Okay, so um, the way we did that is um, we used um, lots of panel and um, directional links for, for the long distances and only uh, the round antennas for the local area. Okay, so this network is from an abstract point of view, a little bit less uh, scale-free. So the exponent and the formula for scale-free networks uh, is a little bit smaller. So we're much more meshed. That means for routing path algorithms, we can take more different routes. That means it could be, in theory, more stable uh, and redundant, actually. Uh, in case one node fails, the idea is that uh, it will just route, route around it. And um, I would say it's more anarchic because people built those nodes. It was not an ISP, it was not us who built the nodes, we just built the initial nodes. And actually the protocol would, be, would allow mobility. So um, theoretically you could move the roofs around <laughs> or have cars or something like that, or cranes with uh, mobile nodes on top. Okay, so why did we do that? Uh, why did, did we do that? What, what, what was actually the, the motivation? Um, I think at that time, we have to see it a little bit in context, at that time the um, data retention laws were coming to the EU and they were widely discussed and uh, but um, build Wi-Fi networks which are in the hands of, of the roof node owners and therefore not really operated by an ISP and therefore nobody could come and say, okay, take down that uh, node because the recording industry doesn't want that, that user. Basically that would mean um, in, case, uh, in case somebody wants to take down the node, you would have to cut all the connections to the node. But that's not so easy uh, with Wi-Fi because anybody can basically connect and pass on the packets. So the other aspect that was really important for us is to have our own network. It's a, it's a matter of um, um, owning your own infrastructure, not relying on some ISP selling you the infrastructure, but actually owning it. And in the course of this, we found out that uh, self-sustainable uh, solutions are absolutely essential. Otherwise, of course, it would